Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, the objective is to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar. And at the end of today's video, you need to be able to ask yourself the question, can I look at any molecule and determine whether it is polar or nonpolar? And that is called its polarity. So looking at molecular polarity today. When we think of the word polar, I think of the word uh, polar opposites. People are opposed to each other. Um, we have the North Pole and the South Pole on opposite sides. And when I think of the word polar, the first thing that comes to mind is going to be opposites. And for a molecule to be polar, what we need is one end of the molecule to be opposite than the other end. And the opposite we're looking at is plus or minus. So if I have one side of the molecule that has positive and one side of the molecule that's negative, I have a polar molecule. And likewise, the negative could be over here and the positive could be up here, or the negative could be up here, this would be a polar molecule as well. Let me give you an example of a molecule that's not polar. If I have on opposing ends, on opposing ends, negatives. I do not have opposites. I do not have poles. The middle actually does not count. The middle doesn't count. We're only looking interested in the sides of the molecule. Over here, I have a plus sign, and down here I have a plus sign. Same way, like charges, these are nonpolar. So in order to be polar, my molecule must have one side positive and one side of the molecule negative. What I'm trying to find out is, does this molecule have one side positive and one side negative? And if it does, I have a polar molecule. In order to do so, I need to examine all the charges in the molecule. Each electron is a negative charge. And I'm going to just label all my electrons negative charges. Here we go. I want you to look at the location of the electrons. Where are they on the screen? The next thing I'm going to do is label the nucleus, the middle of the atom, plus. Plus. And plus. And once I've done this, and I look at my uh, picture here, do I have a side of my molecule that is positive. And I do. This side right here is plus. There's no electrons over here. Because there's no electrons, that gives me a plus charge. This side over here is plus. Once again, I don't have any electrons to give me a negative charge. And here's all my electrons on this side, and that is why this side is going to be a negative charge. This would be considered a polar molecule. Once again, I'm looking for one side to be plus, one side to be negative. This is kind of a crazy uh, slide here, but I'm trying to show you a picture of a nonpolar molecule. Nonpolar meaning I don't have a plus and negative side. What I have here is, as you can see in the picture, just negatives everywhere. There's a lot of electrons everywhere. And I have electrons over here. I don't have any sides of the molecule that are positive. And in fact, all sides of the molecule are negative. This side is negative, and the left side is negative also. And so I don't have this. I don't have a plus minus that I had in the previous one. I simply have a negative negative. And negative negative is a nonpolar molecule. And it comes back down to this slide. Do I have one side positive and one side negative? On the last slide, no. On the last slide, what I had is a negative side and a negative side. And it could have been all positives too, but the fact that I have the same charges on opposing ends makes it a nonpolar molecule. Okay guys, what I want you to do right now is draw a Lewis dot structure for HCl. Press pause, draw it out on your own, and I'll come back and show you my answers. This is the correct answer for the Lewis dot structure for HCl. What I want you to check out now is I have unshared pair of electrons around my chlorine atom, and I don't have any unshared pair of electrons around my hydrogen. The next thing I want you to do is now draw the shape. Okay? Press pause, work out the shape of this molecule, and check my answer. The shape of the molecule is linear. The next thing I want you to do is wherever you have an unshared pair of electrons, put a negative charge. Meaning, I'm going to put a negative charge here, so negative charge right there, and a negative charge right there. Because all my electrons have negative charges. And I now want you to label the middle of both atoms with pluses to indicate their protons. I have protons in the middle and protons in the middle. Lastly, can you tell me if this is a polar molecule? Is one side of the molecule positive and the other side negative? When I do this, I recognize the fact that this side has a positive, char positive charge, and this side 
have these negative charges, and the negative side is over here. And so because I have a plus on the left and a negative charge on the right, what I end up with is a polar molecule. Same way, guys, on this slide, what I want you to do ultimately is tell me, is this molecule polar or nonpolar? In order to do so, we're first going to draw the Lewis dot structure. We're then going to draw the shape. We're then going to label the electrons in the shape as negative and the nucleuses as positive. And from that, we should be able to determine whether or not we have a polar or a nonpolar molecule. So step number one, draw the Lewis dot structure. I'll draw it. Press pause. Step number two, draw the shape. Press pause. See if you can determine that by yourself. Step three is going to be to label the electrons and also the protons. And lastly, step four, determine do I have a polar molecule. My Lewis dot structure will appear like this. All right, so step number one, draw my Lewis dot structure. It's done. I've included all the extra electrons because they're going to be pretty important when I get down to step number three. Okay, guys, we're on step number two now. Can you please give me the shape, draw the shape of nitrogen trifluoride? Press pause, see if your answer matches mine. The shape of it is trigonal pyramidal. It's trigonal pyramidal because there is an unshared pair of electrons on the top of this atom that is repelling the other electrons downward. Done. Step number three, guys. Label the electrons. All, right? All these electrons, I want you to label them as negatives around the shape. So down here on fluorine, Let's say this fluorine is this one over here. I have to draw my three electrons, three sets of electrons as negatives. One, two, three. Got three negatives down there. Each one of these will have three negatives around it then. And the one at the very top is negative two because that's a negative as well. I want you to label the protons in the middle as positive. Every proton is in the middle of this. Okay, now the question is, is my molecule polar? Do I have one end of this that is positive, or are all the ends negative? Well, the guys inside here doesn't really matter for right now, because that's not the end. That is a middle. That is a middle, too. The ends on this are all negative. Because I have negatives everywhere, from this end to this end's a negative, from this end down to this end's a negative, and this end to this end's a negative, this would be considered a nonpolar molecule. In this case, it's not NF3, it is NH3. So what I want you to do, guys, is draw a Lewis dot structure, draw the shape, very similar to last time, and then come with step three, and number four is going to be, tell me, is it a polar or nonpolar molecule? Please start with the Lewis dot structure. Press pause and do yours. Okay, my Lewis dot structure looks like this. I have an extra pair of electrons on top of nitrogen. From here, we want to go to step number two to draw the shape. Please identify the shape and draw the shape out. The shape, as same as the last one, is going to be trigonal pyramidal. And now I want you to take this a step further and label the electrons, all the extra electrons that you see on the picture, label them as negatives. Label all the nucleuses as positives. Press pause. Try and do this on your own. Okay, guys, what we end up with here is something kind of unique. Because hydrogen doesn't have any extra electrons around it, it becomes positive. And that extra pair of electrons on the top here, all the extra pairs of electrons have to take on a negative charge. And so what I end up with here is a top part of my molecule, the very top, being negative, and each one of my legs being positive. And so in reality, what I have is a negative end and a positive end. Therefore, NH3 is a polar molecule. Once again, polar meaning one, one side or one end is negative and one end is positive. So if it went from this top down to this bottom, I have a plus minus, plus minus. If it went from this top down to that leg right there, I have a minus and a plus. And likewise, this and this paired up is my negative and positive. Okay, guys, let's try this on CH4. The whole entire thing, please do it your own. I'll show you my answer at the very end. So work this one all the way out to identifying whether or not it is a polar molecule. The Lewis dot structure comes out to be pretty quick and easy. It's going to be CH4 looking like this.
Remember, each line represents two electrons. That's also in there, too. Next thing I want you to do is shape. So I got the shape. The shape is going to be tetrahedral. Last thing I want you to do is label all those extra electrons as negatives and all the nucleuses as positives. Well, I don't see any extra electrons on here. So I'm just going to go ahead now and label every single one of these as a positive. When I label every one of them as a positive, I can kind of see now that when I pair up this leg and this leg, end to end, I have positives. And no matter where I look in here, I have positives on the perimeter. Because I only have positives, I don't have a pole. A pole needs a plus minus, and I don't have that. So therefore, this is a non-polar molecule. Okay, guys, try it out for H2O. Give me the Lewis dot structure, the shape, and the polarity of the molecule. All right, guys, here we go. Step one was our Lewis dot structure. Pause and review if you need to. That's what it looks like. Uh, step number two is going to be my shape. My shape is bent. The thing that's causing the bending is going to be my unshared pair of electrons. Those guys are causing the bending. Those guys are also important because now I'm going to label them negative when I draw my charges. So each of my unshared pair of electrons become negatives. Hydrogen did not have any extra electrons, so therefore I label it as a positive as I do my nucleuses. So this nucleus is positive. Really doesn't matter because what I have here now is a negative top and a positive bottom, negative top, positive bottom. And this ends up being a polar molecule. Sometimes students look at this and they say, I have a, a negative right here, followed by a positive. Well, bear in mind, your electrons right here are negative. Those are, that's a bond, it's a negative, and followed by a positive. And they kind of get a little confused here. What I really want you to do is not worry about the middle, worry about the ends. If the ends are opposite charges, negative top, positive bottom, I have a polar molecule. All right, guys, give me everything for CO2. Lewis dot structure, step number one, right here. We're going to key in on these guys. These guys are big for us these days. This is going to yield a linear shape. You can draw it with just those lines there. If you insist on doing a, a double bond, that's fine too. The point is it's linear. It's not bent. So I have a linear shape. That's step number two. Step number three, identify where my electrons are and my nucleuses. These guys, anytime I see an unshared pair of electrons, label it as a negative. I have negatives there. I have negatives out there. My nucleuses might be positive. That's all right, but it's the perimeter that matters. Plus, plus. Okay, match up the ends. Negative end, negative end, non-polar. Okay, as long as I match up my ends, end to end, negative and negative, negative on the ends, this is a non-polar molecule. Kind of in summary here, guys, what do I need? I need at least one part of my molecule to have a plus on there. That's what I need. I need at least one part of that to have a plus and another part to have a negative. That is my requirements for a polar molecule. In order to have the plus, though, the plus can only come about if you have hydrogen. So in order to be a polar molecule, do I have a hydrogen? Yes. Now, do I have a hydrogen and have opposite charged ends? Yes. That's considered a polar molecule. Here's examples of nonpolar molecules where you have negatives everywhere on the perimeter. It's the ends that matter, negative to a negative, negative to a negative, negative to a negative. That's all nonpolar. Same way. The ends are the ends, negatives, if they are nonpolar. Another example of a nonpolar molecule right here, where I have pluses on the sides. Once again, I need opposite charges on the sides. The last one I want to look at for today, all right, is going to be NHF2. Same way, we're going to do a Lewis dot, we're going to label the shapes, determine if the molecule has a positive and negative end. Let's go for it. Please take this one away, guys. Press pause, do the whole thing, check your answer with me. Step number one, Lewis dot structure. Awesome. Step number two, guys, give me the shape. Step number two yields a trigonal pyramidal. Remember, the unshared pair of electrons on the top here are going to cause a bending of the structure into a pyramid shape. Step number three, guys, give me the polarity. As I work out the polarity, I'm going to key in on 
my unshared pair of electrons, these electrons that are not being used, they're, they're actually pretty important to us, I'm going to label them as negatives. And I see a fluorine down here that has three extra electrons on it. I'm going to just write down negatives around that guy. I see on the top of my center one, I'm going to have electrons. I'm going to label that negative. You see a lot of negatives around there. Now, I'm going to draw the nucleuses as positive. There's a positive. That one's key for us. Here's a positive. Here's a positive. And here's a positive, too. This guy over here is giving me one side of the molecule that has no negative charges and only a positive charge. That is all I need to have this side of the molecule positive and this side negative, making this a polar molecule. Okay, guys, if you need additional practice, run through the video again, run through all the examples, try them on your own, and try to match my answers as well. One of the keys, yes, my molecule here does have hydrogen. Does that guarantee polarity? No, but at least it's a candidate. Without hydrogen, I cannot have a polar molecule. I need my hydrogen there. After that, I need a positive, negative end somewhere within the shape. I actually want to do another example. The next example I want to look at is BH3, boron trihydride. Same way, guys. Let's work it out. And this is an exception to the Lewis dot structure where boron is only going to need six electrons to have a full outer shell. It's satisfied with six electrons. Next, I want you to do the shape. I'll work this one out with you. Awesome. Label now the pluses and minuses. H's are plus. There's no unshared pair of electrons, but I just want you to see now every single perimeter one happens to be a plus. When this is the case, and this is trigonal planar shape, not pyramidal, trigonal planar, there's no extra electrons, this is going to be an example of a nonpolar molecule. All right, guys, I think we can stop right there. We've done a lot of examples. Go back to the video, read the examples if you need extra help, watch it over again, press pause, do it yourself, and uh, it should all come together, okay? Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Be good.